Well, this is my vegetable garden, which I dug four years ago now. And it's absolutely fantastic. I get the same feeling that I get when I go out and catch my own fish to eat as growing my own vegetables, my own produce to, to harvest and eat. It's really rewarding and the flavours, of course, are so much better. Definitely worth the effort. It is an effort. There's, there's quite a lot of work that goes into it, the preparation and the planning and the planting and everything, but definitely worth it. So I've got five beds. They're five four foot wide beds. And as you can see, it's, it's fenced. I've had to fence it. The reason is there's so many rabbits around here. If you don't fence it, it's, it's, it's hopeless. Of course, it's looking pretty bare at the moment because it's the beginning of the year. I've only just started planting, but I have done some planting. For example, in this bed, I've got potatoes, new potatoes. I've got first earlies and second early potatoes. And this weekend in one of the other beds, I'll be putting in some late potatoes. Down at the bed, down the end there, I've got some seeds in. I've got some uh, carrots, some radish, some parsnips, some spinach and some beetroot. And of course, there's lot, lots more planting to be done. And I bring things on in, in the shed. I haven't got a greenhouse, but I bring things on in the shed and we'll have a look at that in a moment. But although, so although it's looking bare now, later on, about June time, this will actually absolutely be full of, full of fantastic produce. All right, so that's the beds and we'll have a look at one or two other things. Well, I'm really lucky where I've got this vegetable patch in my garden that I get this fantastic view of the sea. Unfortunately, I've got no zoom on this camera, so you may not be able to see clearly, clearly and these cameras tend to make things look further away. But I suppose it's about the coast is about a quarter of a mile away. Absolutely empty out there at the moment because of this lockdown problem very rarely see a ship occasionally see a container ship and virtually no fishing boats at all i haven't seen a fishing boat out there for ages so yeah it's it's, it's a very very strange situation but anyway it's certainly a, a, a fanta fantastic view that roof there by the way is the the roof of the fishing shed that uh, many of you will be familiar with and many of you have said that from the inside it looks like a an upside down boat, the hull of a boat. But yeah, it's a great shed and amazingly that I believe that was built, I think it's about 20 years ago now, hand built by a by a local carpenter. And it certainly is it certainly is a fantastic shed. Up at this part of the garden I keep the compost bins and I've built up five now i've got five different compost bins so basically i'm self-sufficient now with compost and this year that has proven to be a godsend because with this lockdown and garden centers closing you try you try and get compost online virtually imp virtually in impossible so it's great to be self-sufficient with compost have enough compost now this one not a purpose-built compost bin. I, I inherited this when I moved to this place. Basically, all it is, all it was, was a, a coal bunker, a portable coal bunker. And all I did was drill some holes in the side, all around the sides to let some air in. And it's worked absolutely brill brilliantly. It produces compost just as well as your, as your purpose-built compost bin. So these compost bins are nearly all empty now. So what I use it for is different things. I use it on the beds, of course, to, at the beginning of the season to dig some goodness in. But I also, although I grow potatoes in the beds, I also grow them in bags, in potato bags. Fantastic way to grow them if you've got limited space. And I do it because I just love uh, potatoes from the garden and it's just a, like a little extension. Instead of digging more beds, grow them in bags and get more potatoes that way. So yeah, we're ready now to, say virtually empty, we're ready now to start putting, putting all the bits and pieces in from the kitchen and, and elsewhere and, and get the compost for, for next season. This is one of those potato grow bags that I was talking about. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. They've got the drainage holes built in and the handles to carry them around. 
Now I've got 15 of them. And as I said, it's just that I'd like to grow, love potatoes from the garden. And it means I can grow a lot more uh, with, without using up a lot of space. So what I do is I grow firsts, earlies in the bags. Five bags of first earlies, five bags of seconds and five bags of mains. So all I do is take the compost that I've made myself Fill it, fill it up to about, oh, I don't know, about eight, eight inches from the top. And then get your, your seed potatoes. These are mains, which are going to go in this weekend. So what I do with the mains is just put two, two per bag, like that. But with the first early and the second early new potatoes, I usually usually put three. And that works well. Now, with the new potatoes, what's brilliant about this is when they're ready to harvest and all the foliage has died down, I just cut the foliage down and then just put them in the lean-to, so sort of semi-light, and just leave them there. And then when when we want to harvest the potatoes from the bags, when we run out from the beds, new potatoes, just go into these bags, dig down, and take out your new potatoes and they just keep for ages for example last year i still had new potatoes from these bags at christmas so they just so, so it's a brilliant way of doing it for those of you that are limited for space now the only problem of, is when you first get these i can't remember if i said but they're not expensive i think they're only about two pound each from amazon Something like 10, well they were when I bought them, 10 for 1999, I think it was, delivered. The problem is, when you start this, is if you haven't got your own compost. If you have to go and buy bags of compost, then of course it becomes expensive. But because we don't, we make our own each year, um, it's, cost, it's cost effective. So what I do is, when this is all finished and I've harvested the potatoes... I empty the soil back into the compost bins, a couple of compost bins that I've got particularly f- compost for these for these bags. Empty it in and then of course you're adding all your, your kitchen waste into it and a bit of grass cuttings and, and what it, whatever. And that and a bit of manure goes in, which I pick up free from the farms. Manure goes in and of course that puts all the goodness back into the into the spent soil that that you used the the, the year before. Fan, fantastic way, way of doing it. Now what I what I do is I keep these. I've got some decking in another part of the garden, so I keep the 15 bags on the decking. It just makes it easy for me. And got some on there now. And as I say, this weekend I'll be I'll be doing the, the mains. These are my main crop seed potatoes. I've got 40, I think there's 40 there. And as I said, they're going to be going out this weekend, both in the beds and in the bags that we looked at. So what I'll do with these, these should be ready to harvest probably about September. Harvest all of them and then I just store them in the shed in the burlap sacks, the hessian sacks that are made are made for storing potatoes. And that's going to be great. And with a bit of luck, I should have plenty left to to have some potatoes, some old potatoes from the garden for Christmas. Fantastic. Well, in the shed here, and this is where we bring things on. I haven't got a greenhouse in the shed, and I've got some frames, cold frames outside uh, as well. But yeah, I just bring things on that find better to bring them on first and, and plant them out rather than put the seeds in in the ground and what things like these broad beans, other things like peas. Uh, one of the reasons is mice. Uh, apart from having loads of rabbits around here, there's there's loads of mice and and they love it. 
They love things like uh, pea seeds and broad bean seeds and runner bean seeds. So bring them on first uh, and then plant them out. But even though with these broad beans, even though I plant them, plant them out, bring them on and plant them out, the blooming mice, they'll still go down and get whatever's left of the beans. So, so what we do is, the thing I found is I've got loads and loads of coffee grind that you picked up for, for, from nothing, from a lo local pop-up cafe. Loads of coffee grind. You put, plant your broad beans out or your peas, anything that the mice will like, and put that around the base and that stops the mice getting down and, 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 and getting, getting at your beans. So yeah, I, I must admit, this is, this is Linda's shed. Um, she normally brings, brings this on. But I bring a bring a bit on. She got her, got her tomatoes there, ready to go out. Got a bit of parsley in there. So later, soon this month, April, I'll bring things on on like peas. Uh, what have I got there? A bit later, the run, the runner beans. Got some climbing beans or French beans, uh, and and things like that. Now, I am so glad we brought, we got all of our seeds, fortunately, back in November. And I'm glad I did, because as I say, you're trying to get compost now, and things like that, with the garden centres closed, they're rapidly running out of things like compost and, uh, and seeds. Uh, got some lettuce which Linda, she'll, she'll take care of things like that, the lettuce. So yeah, fantastic. So a lot of work, a lot of work, but definitely, definitely worth it. So there you go, just a little walk around my veg plot for those of you that are interested. And what I'll, I'll do is later on in the, in the year, in the summer, I'll revisit this just to show you what this looks like when it's absolutely full of produce. Now, I know a lot of you that follow the channel won't be interested in this sort, sort of thing. But the reason I've shown it is, well, one, we've got this lockdown period. Um, and it's, it's just it's something for me to, to show. And, of course, I'll get back to the fishing things. It'll probably be fishing talk rather than doing any fishing at the moment uh, later. But the other reason I've shown it is, is because, to me, there's a connection. It's the feeling I get when I go out fishing, I catch some fish, I deal with it myself, I bring it back home, and then I prepare and cook a meal. Same feeling with this. You do the preparation, you plant the stuff out, you grow it, and then you harvest it and you eat it. And, it, and, it's, and, and sometimes the two go, go together. A bit of home produce with a bit of fish that you've caught yourself it's just it's just a fan a, a fan a fantastic feeling so once again i hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching